Welcome to our second Coffee with the Chief. Uh, I am Chief Tony Conrad, and I am here with the infamous Lieutenant Jeremy Durant. And our guest today, subject matter expert and one of the most important people here at Murrieta PD, Sergeant Ontario Williams. Hello. Sergeant Williams runs our traffic division. So, uh, Ontario, let's start out. Like, Tell us about you, your career, how long you've been a cop, and, and how long you've been working in traffic. Yeah, I've been a police officer since uh, 1994. I started my career uh, in Alabama for two years. I came out to San Diego in 1996, went to the academy in San Diego uh, PD. I worked for San Diego PD for about eight years. I worked patrol, I worked gangs. I was a uh, field, um, uh, field training officer. And in 2004, came up to Marietta PD where I worked patrol. I was a traffic officer, I was an SRO, I was a detective, uh, patrol corporal, patrol sergeant. And now I'm back at the, uh, back in traffic as a patrol sergeant. I'm sorry, as a traffic sergeant. Sorry. Yes. Uh, so traffic, hot topic. It's it's our second episode, and we've already been asked to do traffic. So we're working in this beautiful city of 115,000 people. How many motors take care of our city? How many do you have in your unit right now? Yeah. So we got seven total, and if you include me, there's eight. Uh, we do have a seven-day-a-week coverage, and uh, I do have an officer uh, on motors working both Saturday and Sunday. Um, but I do have currently seven total motors for the entire city of Marietta. And we do we have an we have an evening motor, right? Yeah, we do have an evening motor. He works from nine to I'm sorry, from eleven to nine, and he basically addresses um, the afternoon complaints that we can't address during the daytime, like the commuter traffic and uh, you know some of those type of complaints. He will address those. And then he will also conduct any kind of a follow-up that we couldn't get done that day, investigate a follow-up to a collision or hit run. And uh, that's primarily his role is to supplement the day shift officers with um, evening enforcement and work. Well, speaking of complaints, um, I know that's one of the hot-button issues in our city is mm -hmm. traffic complaints. It's, it's pretty bad right now. So um, can you tell me more about how you, how you receive complaints and how you track them, how you follow up on them and documentation? Can you, can you walk us through that process? Yeah, so we get complaints in several different ways. We can get them through uh, email. They come to me directly. I get them from the chief. I get them from dispatch, radio calls. So or I get them from our, um, our traffic um, um, police service technicians. So I get them in a variety of different ways. So uh, once I get a complaint, I, I review it and determine if that person needs a phone call back immediately or if it's something that we can address without a phone call. Uh, we do have a um, traffic spreadsheet, a, a grease board in our office that uh, we will document all the traffic complaints uh, unless it's a complaint that we've already received. Uh, every officer on our uh, traffic division is assigned to a service area, some part of the city. So if that complaint falls within his service area, I will assign that to that officer. But if the complaint is something that's occurring after 5 o'clock, then I will assign it to the evening um, um, motorcycle officer. Um, so we, we basically conduct enforcement, um, conducting an education as we need to with the citizens regarding that, that complaint. And uh, I'll always try to um, measure and see how that complaint is being resolved based on do, am I continuing to get more complaints there. Uh, when the officer goes out to do an enforcement, is he seeing still um, traffic violations there? Um, so if I see that there's a reduction in some kind of a, um, the violation that, was, uh, that we received the complaint on, then I will close out that, um, that complaint. But if it's something like, let's say, for example, Clinton Keith, where Clinton Keith is a, uh, an ongoing traffic complaint, and I don't really expect that complaint to go anywhere. So that complaint would just stay open. So that officer knows during his daily routine that he's to go and check um, Clinton Keith and, and do some kind of enforcement there on a daily basis. Well, when our citizens are calling in traffic complaints, what, what's the most important information you need from them in order to do an effective uh, follow-up by your motors? What facts do you need to make it a good, good uh, complaint process? Yeah, so we'd like to have a good description of the vehicle. Uh, a good description of the driver if they have it, uh, a license plate, and if they can get on video, that's even better. Uh, but yeah, those are some basic uh, things that we could would help us to locate this car. Uh, with the license plate, because we send out um, traffic letters to, to owners of vehicles. So if they do get a license plate, uh, we can send out a letter to the owner of that car, basically putting them on notice saying, that, hey, your car was in Marietta at this date and time, and we, a citizen or someone, observed a certain type of driving. And that letter, letter would put them on notice, notice about that. We would like a direction of travel. So if, if we get the license plate and it is a, an address in Marietta and we know that the vehicle is traveling toward the direction of the house, then we can either um, 
opt to send out the letter or we can send an officer to the house and knock on the door and have a discussion about their driving. But if they're obviously going away from where the registered car is, we, we, wouldn't, we would just do a traffic letter or just um, check the area for that vehicle. I, I get all kinds of stuff at community meetings about speed limits. Mm -hmm. um, how do, is the, the police chief able to set speed limits? How about our elected officials? Who sets the speed limits in Murrieta and, and what does that process look like? Yeah, so the traffic engineering department, um, they conduct surveys on roadways. So uh, we'll go back to Clinton Keith uh, as, an, as an example. So there's a stretch of Clinton Keith where um, a citizen or someone re believes that the, the speed limit is too high or is too low, uh, a speed survey can be conducted by the traffic engineering department of the city. Um, the police department, the chief, neither I, we don't set speed limits and we don't install signage for those speed limits. Um, so there is analysis that needs to be done by the uh, traffic engineer. Uh, we take the 80, well, he, they take the 85th percentile, which is basically 85% or the majority of the people are driving at a certain speed. And with that analysis, they take that and, and, and recommend either the speed limit stay the same or the speed limit can go up or it can go down. Um, so that's how a speed survey works when it comes to speeding in cities in the areas of Marietta. Now, uh, residential areas, there's no need for a survey. Residential areas, it's uh, 25. That's the basic speed law for residential zones in, Mary, in uh, the state of California is 25. So you would not need a speed survey for a street like... Um, I don't know, uh, brand one out on the east side of town. Like, you wouldn't need a survey for that because it's a residential zone. Okay. All right, more of a fun, just kind of interesting question for me. So okay. when you were a motor before you were a sergeant, you were first one out of the barn, last one in, right in yeah. sights all day long. Mm -hmm. Now you're a sergeant, yeah. and you have seven officers working for you. How many sights do you write as a sergeant? Like, how does that work? What other duties do you have? Yeah, I got a lot of duties. I got a lot of things on my plate. Uh, I, I do a special events. Uh, I obviously manage the traffic division. I re approve all the reports. I manage all of the fatal investigations in our city. So f with a lot of the different hats that I wear, uh, I really can't afford to spend a whole lot of time in court. So I do do a lot of enforcement, but I personally don't write a lot of tickets myself. Uh, I go into more of an education mode. So I'll observe a violation, I make the traffic stop, and I educate the driver, uh, make sure they understand what they did wrong and then I, I usually will uh, give a, a warning. Okay, interesting. Um, I know another big issue in our community is traffic uh, around schools, mm -hmm. uh, especially when uh, you know, schools start for the semester and they end at the end of the year, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of unsafe driving that gets reported to us. And obviously we take the safety of our citizens very important, especially our, our children. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, tell me what the, what the Traffic Bureau does to address complaints around the schools? Yep, so just like this service area, uh, each motorcycle officer is assigned to a school. Uh, actually, they're assigned to multiple schools. So, uh, I mean, look at we have 18 uh, schools in our city. I've got seven motors, uh, really six, if you don't include the evening motor. He's not assigned to any schools because he doesn't come in until 11. So uh, the six motors are assigned to 18 schools, and they each have about four schools that they have to monitor um, uh, um, themselves. Now the evening uh, officer, I, I will, I, I kind of have him as a rover. Um, if the officer is too busy doing something else for his school or, or away from his school, then that extra officer, the roving officer will uh, patrol his school. So uh, they do, I obtain a complaint from schools, which I often, I get those quite a bit. Um, I will assign that complaint to that officer who's assigned to that school and he will go out and, and monitor the, the driving around the school. Um, I also have that officer will meet with the administration at that school to help try to figure out how can we resolve some of the traffic conditions around certain schools. Uh, some of the schools are pretty, they're dialed in so we don't have a whole lot of problems, problems but we do have some schools that we're still in, trying to address some of the issues come out of COVID-19. Um, there's some schools that are, that are most likely still on some kind of a modified COVID pickup schedule uh, where parents may not be allowed to come onto campus just yet. So that creates a backup. So we're trying to address things like that and try to get a resolve uh, to help promote the flow of traffic around the schools during the, the start and the pickups for the schools. So we, yeah. we definitely have more schools than we have officers. So it's kind yeah. of on them to make sure they get around as, as best they can. Yeah, um, I, do, I do encourage people. Um, if you're not around a school to pick up a, a child, 
to, if you can, to avoid the area. It'll, it'll, it'll relieve you of a lot of frustration. Uh, for example, if you know that a school is letting out at 3 o'clock and, and there's alternative routes to where you can bypass that school, um, I do encourage non-parents to maybe take a different route. That way they won't get frustrated with being stuck in school, tra school traffic. And, of course, that gets follow followed up with a call to me about traffic complaints <laughs> around the school. And okay. it's usually parents who are not there to drop off a kid. Okay, good people who get stuck in traffic there. So. All right, so even when a motor gets behind me, I get I get nervous, right? Yeah. Especially motors. I don't know what it is. About. I do too. Still. You do? All right, so <laughs> I just got to know, like, when you guys go to motor school, is there something they teach you at motor school, how you never smile, it's all business, and, and that's that's why we're all so nervous yeah. when you get behind us? How's yeah, that work? No, that's exactly what they teach. They teach <laughs> us to, they teach us to be, uh, you know, no emotions to wear our, our glasses with the mirrored sunglasses. You remember nice. seeing um, oh, chips totally back did. in the day? Yes. So that's part of the motor school is okay. that we have to put that face on and we want to be uh, people to be afraid of us so they'll not commit violations. <laughs> yeah. I know you're kidding, but in, in all I'm seriousness, not in, <laughs> in all seriousness, when when you are stopping someone, it's I mean it's it's potentially a negative interaction because yeah. you're stopping them from them breaking the law. Yeah. So. Um, they would be at an increased nervousness level. So I'm sure yeah. it, it really behooves you to maintain a calm composure even in the face of them maybe getting excited to de-escalate. Yeah. yeah, all jokes aside, we, you know, we try to be fair to people. You know, our goal isn't to go out there and just, you know, write people's tickets and take money out of their pocket. That's not our goal. Mm -hmm. our, our goal is, is to reduce traffic collisions and to do what we can to get people to obey the speed laws. Um, so, and if we have to do that with writing uh, an occasional citation, then we, we do that. But our goal is never to, you know, punish someone because they're speeding. It's because your your violation was so egregious that you need to go to either traffic school or go in front of a judge to, to help mitigate your, your behavior. It's a danger to the community, danger Absolutely. to everyone else. So mm -hmm. you're trying to increase the safety of the community as a whole. Absolutely. And you know, both of you and I worked at San Diego PD, and, and in a larger city like San Diego, the motor is pretty much just right sites. Mm -hmm. um, here, though, tell me a little bit about all the responsibilities your motors have other than writing sites, like do they go to radio calls? Do they mm -hmm. investigate serious crimes, you know, serious traffic collisions? What else, what else is on their plate? Yeah, so aside from um, conducting enforcement, obviously they have to work their schools. During the daytime when our motors are working, we handle the majority of um, the traffic collisions in the city. Um, we, we handle everything from um, parking complaints to um, uh, disabled motorists um, to just assisting patrol with any kind of priority type calls. Uh, our motors are very active, so if they're out in the field and a patrol call comes out and they're in the area, then they will respond and assist patrol uh, with that. And um, going back to the citations, so with the citations, our motors have to go to court too. And if they make an arrest, they have to go to court. So, um, in addition to that, we handle all of the fatalities in the city. So our motors are on; they are on call. So if a, a fatality comes out at two in the morning, our traffic officers, our motors, are the unit that gets called out for that. So no, they wear uh, many, many different hats, and they all have a, a lot of different duties. And um, they are some of them have some expertise in different things, like um, you know, drug drug recognition experts, um, uh, field sobriety. Um, We've got guys that are first aid, uh, SWAT team members. Uh, we have officers who are on CNT. Um, so yeah, so they have a, a lot of different uh, responsibilities, duties, and hats that they wear. Okay. So we're probably coming up to the time when we need to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. um, give us, uh, as you close this out, top three roadways in Murrieta that you're concerned about right now that maybe your folks are focused on, and top three violations that you'd like to see people pay closer attention to. Yeah, for sure. Going back, it's, it's always going to be Clinton Keith. Clinton Keith is a major thoroughfare from, you know, the east side of town to the west side of town and plus the two freeways. So Clinton Keith will always be uh, one of those streets. Uh, Whitewood Road and uh, Merritt Hot Springs Road, those are our three main streets that we do focus on in, in our city. And those will always be uh, the violation that we see on those three streets is uh, speeding, um, stop violations like stop signs and red lights, and then it'll be distracted driving, people on their phones and that kind of thing. So those are the top three violations that we do see in uh, Marietta. Okay. Great. Awesome. Uh, you've been great, man. Thanks for all the information. Thanks for tuning in to the second episode of Coffee with the Chief. We're going to push another one out uh, with 
Our comm manager, Casey Bostrom, running one of the busiest comm centers uh, in southwest Riverside County. So look forward to seeing that very soon. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>